Well, welcome to our very first online Christmas tea. And so we're just glad that you are participating with us today. Um, and it is so neat that you can invite who you can, who's in your safe bubble, that you can do one or two people with you, maybe even your family, um, even if your kids, you can uh, be a part of that and just uh, be a part of this tea. It's a very unique experience, so no matter where you are. You might be with somebody or you might be by yourself, but I hope maybe that you made a, a hot drink. If you purchased the uh, ticket, then you received some homemade cookies, and if you didn't, well then, go to the store, maybe you have something in your cupboard, and uh, just have a time of a Christmas tea. Set the table uh, real pretty. That's one of the things I miss about this is all the pretty table settings. I loved coming in on the uh, Christmas uh, tea morning, and we would see all the tables set with your time, with your personality, as formal and as casual as you want. So post those pictures on our group page for those of you who are part of Sunshine Hill women. I'd love to see what you did for this event. I, you know, I just think it's so funny, so fun. So um, this morning, we're going to see some demos. Uh, again, that you are, whether or not you're having, choosing to have um, some hot beverages or hot goodies um, before that or with during this time, you can do whatever you want to. And But we are going to be seeing three demos. Uh, Shelly Mian is going to be sharing some ideas. Um, Anne is going to be doing a craft. And again, if you um, purchase the tea uh, ticket, then you received everything, almost everything included in that craft in the bag, as well as I've got a couple of ideas to do. And again, these are ideas that maybe you want to implement or not. It's just about a uh, about, about being together, um, seeing some fun things, sharing with others, and uh, hopefully this is a kickoff to your Christmas season, and that uh, we want you to say, you know, this season of our theme being Christmas at home, or home for Christmas, that literally you're at your house viewing this, and there's going to be a lot more there, so make it special. What we are encouraging you to do is just use item that you've got. Go out to your garden, gather some greenery, put that around, even if you have to replace it mid-season. Just make it special for yourself. If you're in a home with others, family members, friends, make it special. I hope you have a good day. So now I'm just going to kick it off to Shelly, and she's going to be our first demonstrator. Ladies, welcome. Welcome to our Cup of Christmas Tea event, COVID-style we're hoping that you're really going to enjoy this. This is a first for us, but um, we really are trying with our hearts, and we're hoping that, um, that you will really have a wonderful time. I've got a couple of little things here that I wanted to show you. Um, last year when we were shopping for wedding dresses for Michelle, one of her dear friends blessed me with this um, little macrame uh, uh, decoration. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to see um, and show the ladies and just uh, make it work. It's actually a Christmas decoration, so if you want those, that type of a look. Um, in order to teach you how to do this, I really wanted to come from a point of view of showing you my mistakes. I had uh, bought a bunch of um, uh, different types of twine here that I thought I could recycle into my gardening stuff and uh, discovered that um, this stuff, although it's soft, was too thick. And uh, it just made it look kind of dumpy. I didn't even want to finish it. So I cut down the threads from using five to using four. And again, it just felt a little bit too awkward, a little bit too thick. And, and this, this one here um, is just a twine that I use and I thought it would work because it was nice and thin, but it kind of looks like a, you know, a macrame mullet. So I was not too excited about that. But this stuff here was a softer, probably has more polyester in it. It was a little bit too thick. So I just unwound it. And then what I did was I just cut it in half or placed it in half like that. And, it, and I put it into my cinnamon stick like that and then just proceeded with knots. I'm not going to show you how to do the knots here because I think they do a much, much better view uh, working with the, um, on YouTube or, so, or something like that. But that was just a, a little thing that I just wanted to, to show you. Another thing that um, I was working with with uh, 
as I was preparing for this, there's a lot of stuff out there that is mostly minimalist, like really, really quite simple. And so I came across some minimalist Christmas stockings, and I, I just wanted to show you that. I don't think you can get much simpler than this, but uh, we'll just work with that. Those are in my laundry room. A couple of things that I like to do when I'm presenting something like this is uh, working with stuff that I already have. So, oops. So I have these sticks and these sticks, and I have them at um, in my home at, at the front door. So I wanted to. I wanted to create a focal point between our family room and in our kitchen. Gary seems to be having a hard time with focal points lately, and, uh, and I just wanted to explain that. Um, in my family room, I have everything in white on white, beige, very, very neutral. And I have it that way so that when I want to reflect to different seasons, and I've been doing this for years, uh, I can put in different pillows for summer and seashells and little bits of sand and, uh, and containers and stuff like that. And then this year I transitioned to fall. So I'm working with tartan, I'm working with little pumpkins, glass pumpkins, straw pumpkins, and I'm working with wheat. Because um, when I do fall, I like the idea of harvest. I don't really zero in on the Halloween aspect of things. I like to har uh, zone in on the harvest uh, of things. So I created this whole room, and after a few days, Gary said nothing, I said, uh, you notice anything different? And he kind of looked in the room like he was looking on at an addition that he's never seen before. And I, I said to him, just kind of waiting, and uh, He's struggling, and it was great. I really liked seeing this. Anyway, so I, uh, he said, more space? And no, he, did, he just didn't really get it. So I'm doing this for him so that he knows that fall is finished and Christmas is coming. So anyway, I just wanted to start with something really, really simple for you. So I've got some wood, like my branches and stuff, and just an old, an old, old box. This is just... Uh, um, I work with a lot of red and green and white in my house, and I just uh, had this like this. And you could theoretically just kind of leave it like this. This is just very, very basic, very simple. I want to just show you a couple of other things. When I was doing my research, the magnolia leaf is really quite uh, popular as well. So you can put a few of these in and amongst this stuff here, and uh, just, just like that, and you could leave it. Or, if you want to change that out, I always appreciate my neighbors, especially their gardens, and I kind of think whatever grows over on my side, I can keep. So this year I came up with these little posies of heather and boxwood, and, uh, and again, a little bit of carton. So I put these in here like this and like this. And again, you can just leave this. Leave this like this for, you know, if you wish. This is an old product and my favorite um, when people are using this is I love it on, you know, when you have the, the Christmas pageant it, and our Christmas uh, celebration with the children. And you these are made with little um, halos, and they outline the, the wings of their little angel wings. You, never, you always want to be the angel in the Christmas pageant. You never want to be the donkey. But anyway, so you could put this up there as well, like just sort of put this on here. I'm not doing that, but um, you could. Another uh, thing that you might want to add if you wanted to is just stuff you have around the house, you know. I've just, I wanted just to bundle up some... Uh, candles here and add a little bit of, of wool, whatever. Just You can just leave it like this. The other thing is sometimes you can get these lights. Um, some of them are on strings. I guess this isn't going to show through much. but uh, And they can kind of go everywhere on, the, uh, on your arrangement or, in, or just in I'm just going to use these ones in here for now. I couldn't find my 
string one, so we'll just work with that. Ladies, I just wanted to end with uh, wishing you a, a Merry Christmas. And, we, and this Christmas is so different. And I can remember several years ago, we had a different kind of a Christmas. It wasn't a pandemic Christmas, but it was uh, sad. And one of the things that pulled us through, and it, it's just a suggestion for, for some of you, is to do something completely different. Like this year, what I want to do is I want to bake for all of my neighbors. And uh, because I receive baking from a couple of them, and I, and I just am so blessed by that. Um, it, my sister-in-law was the one who invented something that we needed to do completely different. She got us through that particular season. So it is just, it's just a thought. But I do want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. Hello, ladies. It's so good to have you with us. Uh, it's craft time, paper crafting time. Now, in your... Uh, a tea bag, you received a small uh, bag that looks like this, and everything you need is for our craft is inside of this bag, except for those things that you were asked to gather on the outside. And we're just going to take a look at what we're going to end up with, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the things that you needed to gather and how to work on those. What we're making today is what's called an easel card. And uh, it is a special card, this one, not just a plain easel card. This is an easel card that is made so that you can put a votive inside, an LED votive, not a flame one, flameless. So remember that and don't fit something in there that's going to catch on fire and you'll have a little bit of a blaze. And this is what we're going to be making. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, adhesive that you were asked to uh, gather. And you were given a choice of um, a tape runner, which might look something like this, might be smaller. Um, you can get them at hobby stores, dollar stores, so on. And the other one was the multi-purpose liquid glue. So if you're using uh, this one, I like this one, but I have to confess that when I'm finished a project with this, I'm wearing it. So I want to give you a few uh, details and a few tips on, on, on using that, especially if the glue that you set aside to use today is the craft, the white craft glue in the larger container. Remember, don't squeeze too hard or it'll come out and you'll have it everywhere. I have found for myself one of the things that helps is to uh, put a, a blob of, of the white glue on the corner of a scrap um, uh, or on an acrylic silicone pad like this and then use it from with a even a q-tip if you're using the the uh, um, the pages or the white craft glue it is is uh, not as thick as this so it moves around the other thing that if you ha by any chance just happen to decide that today your your uh, adhesive of choice was going to be double-sided scotch tape um, it'll work uh, but you will need to remember that you need to take off just small pieces and perhaps even have a little pair of scissors and snip off small pieces at a time to, to use. So those, there's your idea uh, for your adhesive. And you were asked to use a piercing, to have a piercing tool or uh, gave you some suggestions of sharp pointed scissors instead. You're looking for this point. Uh, a darning needle will work, uh, various things like that. So as long as you've got those things gathered, we're ready to go. So let's have a look. Inside this little bag is everything you're going to need to make your easel card. And so that things don't get lost, they're all inside these little glassine bags, which uh, are, can be waste. So what we've got is we've got a, a, a dark navy piece. And we're going to be working with it um, with, to add pieces to it. We've got another piece of, of um, paper, which is, uh, we call it, I call it designer series paper, and it's a patterned paper. And it has been uh, die cut with the same die cut that's right here, that's right on this one. You have a piece of vellum, and you have two pieces of white that are slightly different size. That's important to keep in mind that they are slightly different size and we're going to need to know that. You have a, a white strip and a navy strip that fits like that. The word piece, a little snowflake, and five dimensionals. 
little puffy dots is what I call them on the side. So we're going to be putting this together. Now, one of the things that I need to show you is that when this was prepared, they, uh, it was die cut two at a time. Now you can tell that it's not where I want it when I line it up like that. So the, one of the first things you need to do right now is to lay this on top of the other, move it around until you have it where you have an equal border and you have the um, matching snowflakes. That tells you which is the top and which is the bottom. You can double check again afterwards, but that tells you which is the top and which is the bottom. Here's the little, uh, I'll show you the little die that we use to, to cut them out, just like that. So, using my adhesive, I'm going to uh, add a little bit of adhesive, and you go ahead and follow me along, and add your adhesive on the corners. You don't need a whole lot. And then put your ve vellum, your piece of vellum, on the back. And this gives you your window. Now remembering which was the top, you're going to check it again, double check it again, and you can see, yes, no, yes. There we go. So now I'm going to put adhesive just on the corners again. If you're wondering what I'm doing over there, it's because um, this adhesive sometimes, especially on small pieces, doesn't like to continue to flow. And so I'm just starting it every time. Some people like to start it with their finger. I don't. That ends up having it everywhere. So there you go. You've got that first part. Now flip it over. Take your two pieces of white. The largest piece is going to be in the center. The smaller piece is going to be at the bottom. So once again, add adhesive. Now this will be perfect because, and I won't have a problem because I'm not doing small pieces here. And you're using the adhesive of your choice, remember? So, and leaving uh, the spaces around the outside edge, the smaller piece. And attach this to the bottom. And now we have that ready. Set that off to one side. Now we're going to uh, fix the piece that is, this, well, I call it the stopper, because at the bottom, it, this is the piece that holds this from sliding. That's ready. We want the word piece. Now here's where you may want to use your piercing tool or your da darning needle or whatever sharp thing you wanted. But on the word piece, if you have some fingernails, you're probably going to be okay just pulling this piece off. However, I see that the center of the A stayed in and the center of the E stayed in. So that's where I'm bringing in my little piercing tool or my darning needle and pushing them out. There we go. All those little pieces are out of the way. And I'm going to just attach the word. Over on the left-hand side here, to this side, up towards the front, the top rather. And you can let the, the tail of the P uh, hang down just a little bit if you like. I've got a few threads here. I'll just pull those out so they don't show. Take that off. This little thread here has to, is, is annoying me, so I'm just going to move that. There we go. So we've got our word piece there. Now here, we're going to, uh, to put on our, what happened to our little snowflake? Oh, right here going to put on our snowflake. Now here definitely you're going to need to use your sharp tool or the sharp end of scissors or the darning needle to, to get this adhesive backing off of it. I tend to use the adhesive backing on things like this because trying to put glue on this just doesn't work. 
Now you're going to attach this to this other edge and you can put a little bit over the edge of the E if you like, but just make sure that you don't go across, have your, your points of your um, snowflake going above this. They can hang down the bottom, but not above. Now, here we've got five dimensionals for you. I'm going to put two at each end and one in the middle. I like one in the middle because if you don't put one in the middle, it tends to cave in. And the one in the middle will just hold you up. Now take off the top pieces. At home, I find these pieces everywhere. I can tell exactly where I have walked when I'm crafting because these things stick, to, they cling to me with static electricity and then they've, they fall out wherever. Okay, here we go. So we're going to attach this to the bottom, equidistance from the sides, and up a little bit. And there we are. And we have, I'm just going to give this a, a good crease right there so it will stay tight. And there you have your finished one. You'll notice that um, these two pattern papers are a little different. I don't know which one you're going to get, one or the other, or maybe something different altogether. Um, it depends on how they, it ends. And then you put your little votif in here, and it shines through with a soft glow. Now this is, as I said, more than a card. You can put your greetings on either of these white pieces and uh, you can decide you're going to give it away or, you're going to, you, or you can keep it for yourself in your own home. Looks lovely uh, on a side table, on a hearth, um, on a bookshelf. And if you, but if you choose to send it or, or gift it to someone else, of course it's not mailable because we have this. So my suggestion is tuck it back into the, the bag that we had it in Find or make a tag. I'll turn this around in a moment so that you can see the finished product. Get some ribbon. Tie yourself a bow. Snip the ends off of your ribbon. Now for this, I am using my, my ribbon scissors. You know they're my ribbon scissors because there's the ribbon right on it. Um, we always did had to use ribbon scissors. I'm very fussy about that. And I think that comes from my childhood when my mother, who was a sewer, said, you cannot use my sewing scissors with paper. So now I always have this. But there you have it. And now you can take that and you can hang it on a doorknob door of someone in the neighborhood and you have a wee gift. Uh, but you also have an easel card. That's it. Well, I'm going to be able to do some uh, few demos this morning and just bring a, a highlighting a couple of things that I did in my home this year. Um, you know, when we did our spring tea, if you joined us, I demoed the fact that you can go to a dollar store and get plates and cups. And then I built this, and I, all summer I've been using these this plate um, with different things on my table outside, and I put some flowers in there, and then I changed it to fall things. And then, so this week I thought, well, what can I do now to transition into winter? And I went on Pinterest and found that I can do different things, and I like this idea. This is kind of like a hot chocolate station. So again, um, you can do this out of any of the tiered items that you have. You can build a tier. I used also uh, when we had our Thanksgiving uh, give giveaways that we included a little chalkboard of things where we could write where we're going to be thankful. Well, I've used it now. I've repurposed that 
here in my little chocolate station. So I put a mug, I dipped a couple of spoons in chocolate. I've got some mini, mini um, chocolate here. I put some cookie cutters. I just went, I did not buy anything. I just went around my house, looked around different jars. I've got some hot chocolate. Oh, that's not true. I did go to a dollar store and uh, picked up some of these baubles. And, um, oh, no, my favorite thing that I bought was these little mini uh, little mittens, and that was from the dollar store. And I loved the fact, um, I love neutrals, and so I was so very happy about that. And I've got it sitting on a, on a, a plate, but you can just have it sitting down. So I'm just going to move that aside now. And uh, that's just, that's a freebie, a little example that's not really a demo. But right now, I want to talk about um, one of the items that I want to demo is an Advent um, centerpiece. And this year, I'm going to do it something a little different. And you might say, well, what is an Advent? You know, we, we talk about Advents being a countdown, and that can be activities. Uh, this is an Advent dealing with um, the, the four Sundays before Christmas. Christmas. And so I, you know, again, I went and tried to get some different ideas. And what I did is I took a candle. I went to, um, I think it was Superstore. They had two for, I don't know, it was under $10 for the two candles. So I did that. Maybe you have candles already in your house that you can use. And my favorite tool is, and I better make sure I do it the same, is a little hot glue gun. So I just I, I eyeball things, and I put two strips of, of glue, of hot glue. Now, be careful when you're using it. You're not um, hurting yourself. But anyway, so I'm going to put that there, and I bring it around. And again, I just used scraps that I had of, of ribbon, and I'm layering it. You can do as simple or as ornate as you want. So now I've got that done, and then I'm going to put on... Um, a piece of ribbon, and again, I just went and found a ribbon that was in my craft area or maybe gift area. I think this might even be what had been with gifts, and so I took it, and, and uh, you can glue, but you can also just tie it. I, I put a dot of glue there so it all stays, and I'm knotting this little piece of ribbon around the candle. So we did that. Then I went to the dollar store and I got this stuff. It kind of looks like, well, it looks like cheap pearls is what it does because that's what it is. It's plastic. And it was actually wide and I cut it down. So I'm going to get a lot of it. So I put a dot of glue on each side and I'm going to put this around and I'm just layering it. Again, you can go as um, ornate as you want or very, very simple. Depending on what your tastes are, you can go very natural. Um, you could add even a cinnamon stick would look nice in the middle of that. So that's another option. And now, um, so I've put those four candles and then you can make a little tag with the four um, themes of Advent, of joy, hope, love, and peace. And uh, I've got that printed. I'm going to tuck that in there. Then I wanted some greenery and because I'm going to put this inside, I wanted um, it, you know, I could just go to the outside and get some branches and that's fine. They will wilt, but that's good too. But what I did is I went to the dollar store, went to Michael's first of all, and to get some really pretty branches um, of greenery, they were like, oh, I don't know, $8, $10. So what I did then is I went to a dollar store and got this for $1.25. And years ago, I bought some tacky when I say tacky, it's not like we use it like we used to use it. Some snow. And what I am doing, I'm going to put this aside. I'm just going to spray snow all over this. And you can glitter this with some glitter. You can do whatever. And so that little dollar twenty-five now at, at this at a store, this would be seven dollars. So that's what you can do. And then what you just do is cut them cut the branches apart and you can just put some branches now around your around your um, candles if you would like you can do it two-sided one-sided I'm going to put this on my mantle so it's going to be one-sided and then you know you could add some um, you could add some pine cones you could add again the cinnamon sticks in there or I thought too I went and got that little plate at um, 
just the, the home sense. And you could, do, you could use that. That was like $7. Or you could just uh, use something you have. Here is a cake plate I already have. And you could do this now in the round. And you could put your candles. Nowadays, they're doing it where it's just, um, you know, like kind of off-center. You could do that. And you could add another candle for Jesus uh, for our Christmas Eve. And again, just fill your plate with these beautiful greeneries, you could add baubles, you could add any all kinds of things, and you could do that as well. So just use what you have, use the candles. So that's one idea I have. Or also, um, again, a garland. You could cut this, you could wrap one of these little garlands, and you could add that to there and wind that around the candles. So that's, some, that's one of the options um, that you can do. And just have fun with it. You can change it up all the time. You can just use that, and I'm going to use that for um, my Advent this season. So that's one of the ideas. So I'm going to put this aside and show you my last idea, and I'm going to use this in our new, um, in our new bathroom. And so what's, what we're doing is I wanted a, I needed to get a ring. This is some of the things I had to gather. And so you can get metal rings, but at that time when I was looking, uh, they weren't available or they weren't a good price. So I ordered this from uh, Michael's, and this um, craft ring actually can be split then in two. And um, so now I can do two crafts with that. And then I went to Value Village and their frames are actually quite expensive. They were like $10, $11. So I went to Salvation Army and I found this one for $6.99. There was a piece of glass, so I, I removed that. And I'm making a frame now. And so what I'm going to do is I've got my ring and I'm just going to put a piece of uh, ribbon and I'm going to hang this from the middle. And I've actually forgotten, there is a piece of this I forgot in my office. And that's, I will show you later, uh, that that is going to be a word I'm going to add. But I'm going to just tie this and to, to the top. Now, you could either have this uh, not showing or you can just tuck it behind. And what I've done is I've put it up through so that I can still hang my, uh, this on a wall. So, again, I'm building a wall feature. So that's going to be hanging there. And I think I will hide this. I don't think I want the um, ribbon showing, although I'm not sure. Well, I'll see when I hang it. So that this is going to be like that. So now I am going to take it, and I'm going to add some greenery to the bottom. I think I'll just put a piece of paper there. I don't want it to um, stick, although I think we're, we're okay. So we're going to do that. Add some, again, some greenery that I had around. Or you can go to this, you know, craft store, dollar stores, Michaels, and you can just, I, I'm just going to um, have some different parts. So this isn't particularly Christmas, but it can be. So I'm going to, again, I want some, a little bit three-dimensional, so I want it to be sticking up. So it's not just a flat picture. So I'm going to Put some glue there. And then I'm just going to, now if you want to, like I said, I uh, have a word of, it's, I think it says home. And I'm going to hang and I'm going to add it. I'm going to add it in between there. But um, you, can, you can have a word or you can just have it like that. It's a very simple frame um, to hang, and so uh, those are my ideas now this morning. So after this, um, I want to introduce our speaker, and that's going to be Erica Jones. I've known her all her life because she is my oldest daughter. Uh, she is, uh, you know, I know that she has anointing and calling on her life to be able to, to speak to others and to share with others. So at this time, Erica's going to now give us a, a message on home. So welcome, Erica Jones. Hi, I just wanted to say that I'm super excited this morning or whatever time you're watching this to be a part of um, this amazing Christmas tea. It's something I look forward to every year and 
I was thinking on the theme home for Christmas and what that means and 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 especially this year because when we talked about doing this theme last year it was the idea um, you know that home is somewhere where your family is and and it may look different than this year than it could ever look before and um, I want to start by sharing I do love Christmas uh, I, I love everything about it I come from that very naturally my mom's in the room here with me today and she's the the queen of Christmas so I'm a princess of Christmas and I, I love it I get down to drive up the 22 boxes of Christmas as soon as Remembrance Day is over. We set it up. We've got two trees on our main floor, mostly because I like one tree to be perfect, and then the other tree can be not so perfect. Um, and I am uh, self-proclaimed as an an indoorsy person. I have a shirt that says indoorsy. I, I prefer to be indoors. I like the, the warmth of, of a home. I like to be home with my girls and us watching movies and doing things together. That's what brings me joy. And, and the idea of being home for Christmas is just really exciting to me. Um, and I was thinking about uh, the mother of Mary, uh, mother of Jesus, Mary. And I was thinking about how she was the exact opposite of home for Christmas, that she wasn't home at all. And I, I started to kind of do a deep dive on the story. And I know it's a super familiar story for most people. You know, it's hard to walk into even a Costco and not see a nativity scene and see baby Jesus and see m the mother of Mary. But I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes today about this woman um, this mother of Jesus and what she went through and her response in a season and in a and an experience that was unique and difficult and and how she responded. So we're going to open up. I've got my Bible here today in uh, it's a Passion translation, which is a newer translation. It's basically a love letter. Um, it's it's more of a personal translation. And so that's what I'm going to be reading from today. But I'm in Luke 1, um, and we're going to start actually before Mary. So we've got Mary's uncle and aunt are Zechariah and Elizabeth, and they are um, on the older side. And the, the season of childbearing has, has come and gone for them. So in Luke 1, eight, uh, verse 8, it says, One day, while Zechariah's priestly order was on duty, and he was serving as priest, it happened by the casting of lots that the honor fell upon Zechariah to enter into the holy place and burn incense before the Lord. Uh, and then it says in verse 12, Zechariah, uh, sorry, 11, all at once an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing just to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear, but the angel reassured him and said, don't be afraid, Zechariah, God is showing grace to you. So let's stop. So here's an opportunity for Zechariah. Here is a, uh, a shining man in front of him, we presume quite large. And Zechariah has a choice in his response. So I do want to just touch really quickly on the idea that at this time, you know, we're in the middle of the Bible here. We're not at the, you know, now we have like the complete story. We've got from creation all the way through to Revelation where we've got God's promises and we've got the Messiah has come and he's, he's done everything he has. But here's Zechariah. And up to this point, we're talking about 400 years or so of absolute silence from God. There has been nothing. The last time that we heard from him was in the book um, of Malachi or the story of Malachi. You know, they had so much presence of God up till now, and they have been waiting generations and generations and generations of waiting. So, you know, babies were born in about 15 years. So if you think about 400 years divided by 15, that is so many generations where they have had absolute silence from this God, and they didn't know where he was or where he was going to show up. And all of a sudden, this angel shows up. So that's where we are right now. So Zechariah's response. This is my, this is my favorite. So, so you know, the, the angel has said, don't be afraid. Um, he talks about the baby that they're going to carry. And he says, he'll be one of the great ones in the sight of God. He will pers persuade many in Israel to convert and turn back to the Lord. And says some great things about this, this son that Zechariah is going to have. Verse 18, Zechariah asked the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man. My wife is too old to give me a child. What sign can you give me to prove this will happen? So Zechariah wants proof. He doesn't want, um, you know, he doesn't want to just be told this. He wants proof. So that was Zechariah's response. And the angel says, I am Gabriel, and I stand beside God himself. He has sent me to announce your good news. But since you did not believe my words, you will be struck in silent and unable to speak until the day my words have been fulfilled. So we've learned from Zechariah, this is not the proper response. This is not the best way to respond. 
So we're going to fast forward a little bit to Mary. So again, I kind of did a deep dive on Mary. I, I looked up the name Mary, and it actually means bitterness. And in, in this time, there was a lot of little girls named Mary, like a lot. Like it was like one of the most common names. If they had a baby name, a book at the very top of the list was going to be Mary for generations and generations. And I was thinking about how do you name your baby girl bitterness? Like where does that come from and why is that catching on? And, and as I was reading about it, and, I, and you know, they don't have gender reveals in, in that day. There wasn't, you could find out and then prepare yourself mentally for girl or boy. And because they were in the silent age, because they hadn't heard from God, every time that somebody was pregnant, they would think about the fact maybe, maybe, just maybe this is the Messiah. And if a girl was born, they knew for sure that it wasn't. And, and so, you know, there's all of this, okay, well, this isn't it. So Mary is born. Her name is bitter. She grows up. She gets engaged to a man named Joseph. Um, and we're going we're gonna, to um, go on from there. So we're in uh, still Luke chapter 1. And it says, during the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, so we fast forwarded six months, the angel Gabriel was sent from God's presence to an unmarried girl named Mary, living in Nazareth, a village in Galilee. She was engaged to Joseph, a true descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, grace to you, young women, for the Lord is with you, and so you are anointed with great favor. So she, again, was pretty startled by this. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and bewildered over what this meant. The angel reassured her and said, do not yield to the fear. Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. You will become pregnant with a baby boy and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme and will be known as the son of the highest and the Lord God will enthrone him as king on the ancestors David's throne and he will reign as king of Israel forever and his reign will have no limits. So she says, how can this happen? I'm still a virgin. And Gabriel says, the spirit of holiness will fall on you. And the almighty God will spread his shadow of power over you in a cloud of glory. And she, then he goes on to tell her about her aged aunt being pregnant. And Mary's response. So this is where I really want to land. Because we can't control what's happening around us, but we can certainly control our response. And so Mary responded saying in verse uh, 38, this is amazing. I will be a mother for the Lord as his servant. I accept whatever he has for me. May everything that you have told me come to pass. So this is a response of, a, of a, an obedient heart, of a joyful heart of, yes, she said she was scared. She wasn't, you know, stuffing down her feelings, but she was saying, you know what? I, I am believing and trusting in the God of the universe that his plan for me is the best plan. So I was thinking about this too. You know, you get this big news, like you're pregnant. You have to go tell your family and your, and your fiance that you're pregnant. And, and you know, at, at this time, a, a young girl that's pregnant outside of marriage, this is not good news. Um, and I was thinking, what would I have done? And I probably would have, um, you know, gone for a walk or, or found something to do. But uh, Mary's immediate response at this point is she arose and she hurried off to the hill country of Judea to go and see Zechariah and Elizabeth. I love that. She went and she wanted to celebrate what was going on. She went and she didn't hide from what was happening. She went straight to it. So then in verse 41, it's she talks about um, Mary goes up to Elizabeth and, and talks to her. And, and the baby within Elizabeth's wombs jumped and kicked. And suddenly Elizabeth was filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. So again, this is very important because this is not yet at the time where the Holy Spirit is for every believer. This is the Holy Spirit came to, to very specific people. And he chose in this moment to come to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth prophesied over Mary. And I love that. And she gave all of these blessings to Mary. You're a woman given the highest favor and privilege. Your child is destined to be a delight. How did I deserve such a remarkable honor to have the mother of my Lord come and visit me? And she just speaks life over this baby and over this woman. And again, let's look at Mary's response. So I think I'd be pretty freaked out at this point. But Mary actually writes a song and sings a song, and a song bubbles up from her. Mary sang this song, My soul is ecstatic, overflowing with praises to God. My spirit bursts with joy over my life-giving God. For he set his tender gaze on me, his lowly servant girl, and from here on, everyone will know that I have been favored and blessed. The mighty one has worked a mighty miracle for me. Holy is his name. And she keeps going, and there's a song that bubbles out of her. So we're going to fast forward again. So Mary's pregnant. She tells Joseph. Joseph has an angel come to him as well. He obviously has a good response, unlike Zechariah, because he is allowed to have his words. So, you know, we know that that's a good sign. Um, and we're fast forwarding again. 
And this is where, again, I, I had to relate it to my own life. And it's, it's when I was pregnant with my first or, or with any of my babies, um, there's just an anticipation and, and, and there's a desire to create a, a home or a space for that baby. You want, you know, maybe everything's not going to be perfect, but you want to have the crib. You want to have the color picked out. And so, you know, and again, I know that it was a different time, but I, I still believe that every baby was, was something to be, to be celebrated. And there was anticipation and excitement there. And so here's Mary, pregnant with her first baby, and there's a census going on, and her, and her fiancé says, we need to leave. So she's leaving the home that she's known where her mom is. You know, moms play a huge part if they're around in your life to take care of your first baby, and she's to leave everything she knows, and the Bible says that she was very pregnant. And so we're in verse 2 of Luke here. During those days, the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus, ordered that the first census be taken throughout the emperor. Empire. Everyone had to travel to his or her own hometown to complete the mandatory census. So Joseph and his fiance Mary left Nazareth, a village in Galilee, and journeyed to their hometown. They were required to register there since they were both direct descendants of David, and Mary was pregnant and nearly ready to give birth. So obviously we know the next part of the story. This is the, the familiar part of the, of the story. Um, Mary couldn't, they couldn't find a place that was suitable or, or available for her to give birth. So she ended up in either a cave or a, a barn or somewhere outside. And she wrapped it, the babe in, in, in you know, st- strips of clothes and laid them in a feeding trough. And again, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, this, this daddy of this little boy, their firstborn and of the Messiah of God, he is a, he's a carpenter. And what dad that is a carpenter would want to lay their baby in a feeding trough instead of a, a, a crib or a, something that they were able to build with their own hands? I, I, it just, it's interesting to me that um, it wasn't by accident that that was his profession, that he, he was a carpenter. Both Mary and Joseph were asked to lay down significant pieces of what their desires were for this Messiah and for this experience, that this isn't what they probably would have chosen in any way, shape, or plan, uh, or form. So I was thinking about this, and, and, and you know, you'd want this perfect experience, and here's this baby boy born in a different way, and, and, and I was thinking about the response and the chance that they had to respond to the to these questions that were asked of them and, and these requirements and all of the sacrifices that they made in order to have this happen and this Messiah to come in the way that God planned for them. This is literally the opposite of home for Christmas. And yet their response was obedience and joy. This Christmas, what can we do as women to be present in God's presence? I know that everyone's experiences are different. I know that not everybody's memories of Christmas is warm and fuzzy or it being a joy-filled thing. I also know that Jesus is home, that Jesus comes with us. And one of the great blessings that we have of this Messiah being born to us is the availability of this Savior that is for you and for me. I know that in 2020, you know, uh, starting of this year, this was not what any of us signed up for. This is not what we hoped for. This is not what we projected. This is not what we um, signed up for even. But I do know that we don't have to do it alone. I know when the church picked home for Christmas, we had no idea that there was a pandemic happening. We had no idea that we were going to be either in small little bubbles or not being able to go and visit our families this Christmas. We can't control what's happening around us, but we can control our response. Just like Mary, the mother of Jesus, responded in a way of obedience and joy. That's how our hearts can do that this Christmas. And so my encouragement to you is may we be like Mary with a song in our hearts that we would feel God. Um, I have three last quick scriptures of um, comfort that I found to be super helpful from the words of Jesus, this little baby that was born to Mary, the mother of Jesus. The first is John 16, 31 to 33. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. This is Jesus speaking. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. Next is John 14, 27. Nope, that was John 14, 27. The next is John 16, 31, 33. Here it is. Um, So this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he says, Now you finally believe, and the time has come when you will all be scattered. So again, think about COVID. We're all kind of in individual bubbles. And each one of you will go your own way. 
Yet I am never alone, for the Father is always with me. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. And the last one is Romans 13, 15, 13. Now may God the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflow with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his superabundance until you radiate with hope. I hope that we can look back on 2020 and say it's not what we thought it would look like, just like Mary maybe had said, it's not what I had hoped and dreamed. But if we trust that we are in line with his perfect will, it will be the best Christmas ever. Let's just pray. God, thank you for... um, your presence. Thank you, God, that even though we're not in a room stuffed with women and, and the joy and the laughter and the conversation that is is usual to, to what we've experienced isn't happening right now. God, I pray that every woman watching this and even the women that aren't watching it, God, would feel your perfect peace, that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are their savior and that you love them and that while things may not look the way that we plan, they look exactly how you planned. And so, God, I just pray your presence would come fall on us this Christmas, that we would slow Slow down enough to be able to feel your presence beyond anything else that we've ever experienced, God, and that your joy would radiate in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so now thank you so much, Erica, for sharing your heart and the story and the insight of the story of Mary and uh, what she must have felt like and that she wasn't home for Christmas. That really hit me when you shared that today. And so, you know, as, as we're closing our time together, we think about the fact that, you know, whatever is going on where you are, if, like, again, what we said earlier, if you're by yourself or with others, that, you know, that you're home and it's different. Maybe you can't have relatives come visiting you this Christmas. Maybe it's just totally different. Well, when Mary planned to have her first child, it wasn't to be born in a stable like the like her baby Jesus was. But you know what? We don't know. We didn't plan this, but it's different. But I just pray that no matter your situation, whatever you, what is ever is going on in your life, that you will feel um, Jesus in your midst. That um, I love that Shelly shared that she says, I'm going to bake and I'm going to give out my goodies to my neighbors. Maybe there's something else that you can do. Maybe there's an idea that we're doing today that you can do for others. The card that Anne has demonstrated. Maybe there's something else. Don't just um, feel sorry for yourself and and be closed in, but say, God, what can I do to reach others who are home this Christmas? So now we just pray that the Lord be with you, that you would feel his presence, that you'd be safe, that you would be well and healthy. I hope this kicks off. The Christmas season. Um, that's the beauty of this. You can see this um, whenever you chose to, to be viewing this, or you could do it again, and maybe next time doing this viewing, it'll be available, and you can invite somebody that, again, is in, in your safe six. So God bless you. Merry Christmas. You take care. Uh, we wish that we were with you, but we wish you, or we, we pray for God's presence in your life. Merry Christmas, you guys. Bye.